In this video, we are going to be talking about good traffic and bad traffic. And no, not all traffic is created equal. You want qualified traffic going to your blog. You don't want to just send anybody uh, cold who's going to your page that isn't there for a specific reason, okay? And there are bad traffic sources that people have leaned on to try and get customers to uh, affiliate products and it's just not going to work because it's not going to convert. The first thing you should never ever do is purchase an email list. The reason for this is, is if you're just grabbing random emails off the internet, they don't know who you are, they never signed onto your list for a specific reason, and they just don't know, like, and trust you enough to be able to purchase the products that you're recommending. That hurts your email deliverability because they will more than often, they'll hit the spam button and they will de degrade your overall sending. So any future emails that you send out to your list will more than likely uh, go to spam because other people have marked your emails as spam. Okay, so do not ever purchase an email list. And the next thing is viral traffic does not equal sales. As somebody who's been on a platform like TikTok for almost a year, year and a half now, I've had many videos go viral and get millions of views, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that traffic that clicks on my link is going to be buyer traffic. That traffic takes sometimes seven to 10 visits to your website before they actually become a qualified buyer. You can get touches via email, you know, sending them uh, automated email sequences. Uh, you can continue to create content to get that content in front of them again that's continuing to warm them up. So viral traffic that's cold doesn't necessarily equal sales. So whereas is this isn't a, uh, it's not bad traffic, it's just traffic that just is not qualified and is cold. You should never purchase clicks for sale. And Fiverr is a place that people go to. If you're not familiar with Fiverr, it is an online marketplace where you can purchase uh, services from people, from everything from creating uh, digital art for you to, you know, people being a virtual assistants to uh, you name it. You can actually purchase clicks of people who like you're purchasing these tra this traffic going to your blog or website. You don't know the the quality of the traffic. You don't know the actual vendor that's selling you the clicks. You don't know where they got their clicks from. You don't know if those people are really truly interested in the products or whatever your niche blog is about. So I highly recommend never purchasing clicks from a third party site like that. If you're gonna go uh, the route of spending money for traffic, I would go uh, with you know more traditional styles of paid advertising, which is Google ads, YouTube ads, uh, Facebook ads, and things like that. So now that we've gotten bad traffic sources out of the way, let's talk about the good traffic sources. There are a plethora of good traffic sources. You can go the paid route, you can go uh, organically through social media, which is where I recommend most people start because it's free. You're just trading your time uh, for the traffic to create content to, to get people over to your blog. Good traffic sources start with targeted traffic, okay? So when you are leveraging your time creating content to drive people to your website, what you would have to do is create very congruent content that speaks to your audience, right? So that, that content is going to be driving a very specific person looking for information about maybe a product that you're talking about. Maybe they need a, a solution to their issues that they're having with their, uh, their business, with their, uh, their health, right? Their relationships or whatever it may be. Getting targeted traffic is key because those people are already interested in what you have to offer. I would rather have 10 people who want exactly what I'm promoting instead of a thousand people that just land on my on my blog page and then bounce because they're not interested in what uh, in what the blog is actually about. That being said, search traffic is best. When buyers are showing intent, that's what they're, they're going to be searching for a solution to their problem. That's why SEO is so amazing is because people go to Google for answers, right? They want to learn more about, but especially people who are getting ready to make a purchasing decision, they want information. 
The information comes first before somebody feels compelled to actually purchase a product. So when they enter in, you know, what is or how is or best this or this review, they are actively searching for a particular product. It's just up to you for your blog to rank high enough for particular keywords to be able to get in front of that search intent, of that buyer intent. And this is why I talked about in previous videos about uh, creating a free lead magnet or some type of free training or something on your blog that provides them with value. They're already searching for a particular solution to their problem. You just need to amplify the amount of information that you're giving them to educate them enough so that when they click the links that are in your blog, they will then go over to the uh, recommended product or service and they're already warmed up enough that the sales page is gonna do the, the converting for you. So let's talk about specific traffic sources. All SEO traffic, for the most part, comes from search engines, except for we're gonna talk about one other one here. Uh, in a second. Search engine optimization basically means is, is that these search engines will crawl, they'll use bots that, and spiders, and we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole right now, but like they use uh, an algorithm to search your content uh, based off of lots of different factors, but they they look at the keywords that you're using to, to match what somebody, so they wanna match the article that you're writing with is it going to solve somebody's problem? Is it the best? Is it the highest qualified? Is it, that's how people end up on page one, is that people are searching for an answer and Google ranks people by how well they think they answer a particular problem or question. Okay, so all SEO traffic, uh, for the most part, it comes from these search engines, Bing, Yahoo, Google. And there are lots of other third-party sites like Quora, which is, which if you're not familiar, is a question and answer site. So people go to this particular site to ask questions. And then you can go onto this uh, site and you can answer these questions in depth, and then you can link your blog in the answer. And if people want more information, then they'll click the link and go over and consume more of your content within a particular subject. So Quora is a very, very powerful platform uh, for long-term sustainability because you can answer questions uh, that, uh, especially in evergreen niches for months, if not years, you can get traffic. And I've done this in the past and I've gotten traffic to uh, my YouTube videos, to websites and things like that, uh, even years ago. I would be remiss if I didn't say how important YouTube has been in my affiliate marketing business. It is the second largest search engine next to Google and Google owns YouTube, okay? We're gonna talk more about YouTube and driving organic traffic to your blog, utilizing your YouTube channel, but I cannot overstate enough how important it is to leverage a secondary search engine like YouTube. And not only that, but if you get YouTube subscribers, they are some of the most loyal and the warmest followers that you will have. And if you're with, if you're niched way down, and even if you have less than a thousand subscribers on YouTube, those people are interested in what you have to talk about. And your blog is a way to educate them on, a, on another platform collect their emails, and be able to remarket products to them. Another one that is utilized very heavily is a search engine, but it's utilizing images and text, and that's Pinterest. Pinterest is uh, predominantly, I think it's dominated like 70% by women, but don't underestimate Pinterest because Pinterest, there are tons of ways to be able to uh, link videos, and they now have a way to uh, create short form content, and you can create images that people can view. If they're interested in what the infographic is talking about, then they'll click over and there will be a way for them to go to your website off of Pinterest. And that's all based off of SEO and keywords, right? So, you know, how to, you know, how to get your baby to sleep, right? If you're promoting a baby, a sleep product for a children, right? So that's what your blog is about, is all about uh, parenthood and things like that. You could create a infographic on Pinterest that goes after the keyword, how to get your child to sleep through the night in the first six months, okay? That would be just like a long tail keyword that you would go after. You would put a, a a graphic of a baby and some couple words on there. And if it speaks to that person, then they're like, yes, I need to figure out how to get my baby to sleep through the night. They're gonna 
click that button, they're gonna see a link. When they click that link, they're gonna get sent over to your blog to which they're gonna read the blog and in there you'll give them a solution to their problem, an affiliate product you know, that uh, maybe it's an ebook or it's a video course or some way to help these people solve that problem and it will all start just by people kind of scrolling and swiping on Pinterest. You heard me talk about fast traffic, viral traffic. You need to meet your potential website visitors, your customers, where they spend their time most and where they spend their, more, their time most is on social media. So to, you can get a flood of traffic from TikTok. Uh, I'll prove this in later videos in this course. Uh, you can get a ton of people to get over to your website, your, your blog, just by doing like 10 or 15, 30 second videos. You don't have to, all you have to do is pique curiosity and get people to take action by giving a strong call to action. You just need to hook them just enough to click the link and go over to your blog to consume more of your uh, long form content. So definitely utilize the, the free traffic that TikTok can provide for you. And lastly, all paid traffic shows buyer intent, okay? So when you target people with a paid, say Google ad, and you go after a particular, you're bidding on a long tail keyword, when somebody enters that long tail keyword, they, are, they have buyer intent. So if your ad is going after that keyword, it will show on page one right at the top. And if, that, if your copy in that ad is enticing enough or there's enough curiosity there, or if it answers, it looks like it answers a specific problem, they're gonna click on that and they're gonna end up going over to your blog. They'll consume more of the content and if they're interested in what you're talking about, your hyperlinks will be in there and it will send them over, okay? So paid traffic, it's, it's great because it's targeted and the your ideal customer has buyer intent. That's gonna be it for the good and bad of traffic sources. Again, when we're creating our blog, we're playing the long game and we really want to go after that, that search engine optim optimized traffic, okay? So in the next video, I'm gonna talk about why SEO and blogging is the most sustainable way and long-term solution for you to build uh, your digital asset. All right, we'll see you on the next video.